Howdy folks, my name is Richie aka Bogotter and welcome to the Heart of Thorns edition of the Guild Wars 2 Boomerang series. What's a Guild Wars 2 Boomerang? Well, it's someone who played Guild Wars 2 in the past, took a break of varying length, and is now returning the game and trying to get back into the swing of things. Oh, Tarzan, swing of things. Never mind. <clears throat> My previous eight Guild Wars 2 Boomerang videos covered all the changes from the launch of the game up to the Heart of Thorns expansion. This video will focus on the major changes that were added to the game in the Heart of Thorns expansion on October 23rd, 2015. Subsequent videos will cover the changes since that expansion. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a Pop-Tart, and let's get to it! After purchasing the Heart of Thorns expansion and logging in for the first time, you'll be prompted to head into the Silver Wastes. This zone is located west of the Brisbane Wildlands, and there you can start a new Heart of Thorns story instance called Prologue Rally to Maguma. After you finish that story instance, you will be in the Heart of Maguma. Congratulations, you're in the jungle, the Maguma jungle. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I got something in my throat this video. <coughs> The expansion comes jam-packed with four gigantic new maps, the Verdant Brink, Auric Basin, Tangled Depths, and Dragon Stand. Here you can explore the new jungle region, which focuses on verticality with three distinct biomes in each map, the roots, the floor, and the canopy, which are the bottom, the middle, and the top, respectively. Gliding is one of the new ways to explore and get around the new maps. You can unlock gliding through the brand new Mastery System, which is an account-wide horizontal progression system available once players reach level 80, and only if they have the Heart of Thorns expansion. Masteries are abilities unlocked through each associated Mastery track. Mastery tracks are organized by region, Central Tyria, which is the Old World stuff, and the Heart of the Maguma. Each Mastery point needs only to be obtained once per account, and has an associated achievement marked with relevant Mastery Point symbol in the Achievement UI. Mastery training progress is also account-wide, allowing progression to be made on any level 80 character that gains experience. Once a Mastery is unlocked, you can use it on any of your characters on your account. Oh my gosh, an MMO that actually respects the player's time. who to thunk? Players unlock Masteries by fully training a selected Mastery track, by just gaining experience. Anything that gives you experience points will help level up the Mastery track. Once you max out the experience bar for the Mastery that you have selected, and spend the requisite number of Mastery points in the Mastery tab of the Hero window, then you unlock that ability. For example, select the Gliding Mastery line, and you can learn different abilities and improvements to the Gliding ability. By the way, in case you didn't notice, Heart of Thorns, unlike most expansions and other MMOs, didn't raise the level cap, so you still have level 80 as your maximum, but this mastery system is the way that you continue to gain experience points and unlock new abilities and such. Moving right along, one of the other big features of Heart of Thorns is the brand new profession, the Revenant. Uh, no, not that Revenant. Revenants channel the power of the mists and use abilities of legendary heroes like Shiro Tagachi, Ventari, Jealous Iron Hammer, and Carrot Top. As a soldier profession, Revenants wear heavy armor, and they can use mace and swords in their main hand, axe, swords, and shields in their offhand, and for two-handed weapons, they have the hammer and the staff, and for underwater combat, lols, they use spears. The Revenants' core specializations are Devastation, which allows you to improve your damage and mobility, Corruption, which focuses on conditions. Retribution, which is mostly defensive. Salvation, focuses on healing and support. And finally, Invocation, which improves legendary channeling and fury. While the Heart of Thorns expansion didn't increase the level cap, players can broaden their character's spectrum of abilities by unlocking elite specializations. Each core profession, including the Revenant, have access to an elite specialization, and they change the way your character plays. They give you access to a new weapon, a new healing skill, elite skills, and a set of utility skills, and some of them even alter the core class mechanic for that profession. Want to hear a little bit about each of the specializations? We'll prepare for the lightning round! Guardians become Dragon Hunters that lets the player wield a bow and focuses on new trap skills and grants upgraded versions of the Virtues. Revenants become Heralds, which unlocks the legendary Dragon Stance, where Glint grants them the ability to use shields and utilize energy upkeep skills. Warriors already had all the good weapons, so the elite specialization Berserker gets the torch. Warriors can now become Berserkers capable of channeling their adrenaline to enter a Berserker mode. While enraged, they gain access to new Primal Burst skills, replacing standard Burst skills with new enhanced abilities that are more bursty and primal. And Berserky. 
Engineers in the Heart of Thorns can pick up giant hammers and become resourceful scrappers. They can craft utilitarian gyros capable of restoring health to waning allies and dealing the coup de grace to lingering foes. Rangers commune with the dominant ancient magics of the jungle to use druid specializations which gain access to the staff weapon and glyphs. Their new profession mechanic allows them to accumulate astral force to become a celestial avatar, a paragon of reactive recovery and strong sustainability in a dangerous world. AKA, they heal and keep your butt alive, so be nice to them. They a tough job. Wielding an offhand warhorn and utilizing shouts, Tempest blasts out elemental power to support allies at close range and deal constant damage to enemies. Tempests are the elite specialization for the elementalists, and they are able to overload their attunements to deliver high pressure, sustained damage, control, and healing to nearby areas. Thieves in the Heart of Thorns expansion become daredevils, where they lose their ability to see and become lawyers. Then they make a crappy film, but they redeem themselves with a pretty sweet Netflix series. <clears throat> There's that thing in my throat again. Specializing as a daredevil allows you to wield a staff as a melee weapon and it also gives you access to a third endurance bar and be able to greatly modify the effects of your dodge ability. The Mesmer's Chronomancer gains new abilities that allows them to rend both space and time. <gasps> time? This is a great place for a flash joke, Richie. Uh, no. Don't you have to go to the gym or something? Chronomancers can use a shield and new well abilities and they also have access to a new alacrity effect that speeds up skill recharges rather than slowing them down. And finally, necromancers can become reapers. Now reapers are- Butt out you boob, I'll do this one, me Skeletor! <laughs> reapers are slow and hard hitting. These deadly combatants call out the impending doom of their enemies like that fool He-Man with piercing shouts. Upon accumulating sufficient life force, they can enter the Reaper Shroud, a deadly form that grants them a dark side of malevolent energy and abilities to match it, capable of heavily afflicting their victims with chill and other conditions. <laughs> well, okay, terrific. Heart of Thorns and subsequent updates have brought new legendaries into the game. The new legendaries are Astralaria, Chuka and Chapawat, Eureka, Hope, Nevermore, Shushadu, Flames of War, and the HMS Divinity. Also, we've gotten two legendary back pieces, Ad Infinitum, which is unlocked through collections mainly done in the Fractals of the Mists, and the Ascension, which is unlocked through PvP leagues. Finally, there are three sets of legendary armor, which are actually animated, and they are awarded by doing raiding. Speaking of Fractals, did you know that they're more fun than ever to play? That's right, there's a ton of new changes that have gone into the Fractals of the Mist. Not only the actual instances themselves, but the actual lobby, the Mistlock Observatory lobby area has received a huge makeover. There's new vendors there and even a jumping puzzle to explore. Almost all of the fractals themselves have been retuned for pacing, making them less frustrating and take less time to actually complete. Most of the boss encounters have also been tweaked, adding actual mechanics that you have to pay attention to. <laughs> uh, do you smell something burning? Yes, get out of the fire, you tool! A fractal run now consists of one fractal island. You just do one instance. You used to have to do three instances and then a boss island to do a complete fractal run, but that's no longer the case. You just do one at a time, and they increase the maximum fractal scale from 50 to 100. Rewards for completing fractals have also been reworked. A new fractal encryption box has been added to each island's reward chest. Fractals even have their own new daily system so that you can actually do fractal dailies as opposed to the regular dailies. They also added an NPC to the Mistlock Observatory who will teach players about the agony condition once they begin encountering it. And there's been two new fractals added to the game, the Chaos Fractal and the Nightmare Fractal. And don't forget, we already mentioned this, but there is a new legendary backpack that you can get primarily through doing fractals. The Heart of Thorns expansion also has added my favorite feature to the game, raiding. Now you and nine friends or guildmates can get together to tackle some really tough challenges. The Forsaken Thicket raid takes you deep into an unexplored area of the heart of the Maguma above Verdant Brink to track down a missing squad who has been investigating the area. The raid is split into three raid wings with three bosses each, Spirit Veil, vale, Salvation's Pass, and Stronghold of the Faithful. Guild Wars 2 raiding is different from other MMOs in that there is no inherent gear treadmill. You're not going to fall behind in gear. Once everybody on your raid team's got all ascended gear, there's no progression to be made in that way. So if you want to defeat encounters, the only way to do that is for your team to actually get better. It's skill-based. There's no more drops that you can get that help you outgear the event and make you easily tackle these bosses. But that certainly doesn't mean that there isn't loot to have. There are cool things to grab. There are weapon skins, there are mini pets, there are accessories and ascended gear. Are you really unlucky getting the loot that you want to drop from the bosses? 
Well, you don't have to worry about that because there is a brand new currency called Magnetite Shards that you earn just by doing the raids. And you can use that currency to purchase the minis and weapon skins and other things that drop from the bosses so that eventually you can get all the stuff that you want. Of course, you have to have beaten the bosses in order to purchase the loot from that boss. Just keep that in mind. A fourth raid wing was added to the game in February 2017 called Bastion of the Penitent. And for anybody who is really into the lore of Guild Wars 2, this is a must-see experience. To assist with raiding and, of course, World vs. World, a new squad UI has been added to the game. Squad leaders and lieutenants can make use of markers and ready checks to organize and plan tactics with the rest of the squad. And finally, the paramount of raiding achievement is the legendary armor sets. There's three of them for heavy, medium, and light. These armor sets are animated when you enter combat. And like other legendary items, it allows you to pick the stats on it. But unlike other legendary items, you can click on runes to slot them into this armor and any existing runes on the armor will be transferred back to your inventory. Pretty nice, eh? And now for something completely different, Guild Halls have been added to the game with the Heart of Thorns expansion. Guild Halls are areas of guilds to play, battle, socialize, and progress together. Your guild will have to claim one of the two Guild Halls that have been added to the game doing an instance group event to take control of the area. Once you've unlocked your Guild Hall, you can access it and teleport to it from anywhere in the game via the Guild Panel. There are two Guild Hall options, the Gilded Hollow and the Lost Precipice. After claiming your Guild Hall, many upgrades are available that add buildings, improvements, and other features to your little home space. Each upgrade has a different set of requirements that include items, favor, which replaced influence, gold, or ethereum, a new Guild Hall currency. These requirements must be met before the upgrade can be activated. Any guild member can look at the list of available upgrades, however, only a guild member with guild upgrade permissions can actually activate the upgrade. Guild halls take a lot of effort to fully unlock and it's something that your guild can work together to progress. Along with the guild hall, scribing is a new crafting discipline that was added to the game and it allows you to make different decorations for you to spruce up your guild hall and give it a unique feel. You can access the discipline through the workshop in your guild hall. It wouldn't be a proper Guild Wars 2 Boomerang video if we didn't talk about how dailies have been changed around again. Every day a new set of 12 achievements is generated in three categories. Four PvE related achievements, four PvP related achievements, and four WVW related achievements. Each achievement rewards a specific bonus chest that contains reward related to the activity that was necessary to complete the achievement. <laughs> In addition, the meta achievement called Daily Completionist rewards completing any three of the available achievements with 10 achievement points, two gold, and a small bag of spirit shards. Also, holiday dailies are added to this category when a holiday is going on. Living World Season 3 is now underway as of July 26, 2016 with new story content to play after you complete the Heart of Thorns campaign. Five episodes are currently available, Out of the Shadows, Rising Flames, A Crack in the Ice, Head of the Snake, and Flashpoint. They each add a new level 80 zone to the game as well. Bloodstone Fen, Amber Bay, Bitterfrost Frontier, Lake Doric, and Draconis Mons respectively. They each add new weapon and armor skins, achievements, and currencies along with other rewards. Speaking of dragons, nice segue! Thanks. If you haven't fought your friendly neighborhood Shatterer in a while, go check out that boss fight. It's been revamped like they did with Taquato earlier, and a new achievement section has been added to the game so that you can get these optional achievements and unlock a Shatterer themed back piece. Ooh, sparkly. Okay, let's jump into some PvP action. Stronghold is a structured PvP game mode introduced in Heart of Thorns. The objective of the game is to find and kill the enemy's lord in their stronghold and along the way fight for and gather supplies. Stronghold only has one map available called the Battle of Champions Dusk, but there is a brand new conquest map called the Eternal Coliseum, and they've also brought back the Raid on the Capricorn map. It's been rebranded as the Revenge of the Capricorn map, and it's just like the old conquest map except less sharks. A new competitive ranked PvP system called PvP Leagues has been added to the game for players looking for a more hardcore PvP experience. Leagues run on a season system. Seasons last for 8 weeks, allowing players to earn and progress in each league. Prior to each season, there will be a planned balance update that can change the meta. Divisions track progress made in leagues for each season. Based on your numerical skill rating, you are placed into a division. The divisions determine which badge is available on your nameplate and even affect the rate at which you earn league rewards. Every season will start with a soft reset of the previous season's rating. To obtain your starting skill rating for the season, you must play 10 placement matches. Inactive players will experience a decay that lowers their skill rating over time up to a maximum amount. 
Decay can be worked off by playing league matches. There are no restrictions on backward progress with the skill rating. You can move down in divisions by either losing matches or being inactive. This helps ensure that players are always moving toward their correct rating and are facing players of similar skill levels. The division consists of standard rankings from lowest to highest, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and legendary. Rewards are gained from completing reward tracks. There are five different tracks with increasingly viable rewards, and the last track is repeatable. Each track consists of a number of tiers. To complete a tier, one needs to earn 20 to 30 pips depending on the rank. And pips are earned by winning and losing matches and earning top stats. Winning a match will award 10 pips, losing a match will award 3 pips, and earning any amount of top stats will earn 1 pip. Being in the Platinum Division will also award you with 2 extra pips after each game, and being in the Legendary Division will award you 4. The reward level tiers are Cerulean, Jasper, Saffron, Persimmon, Amaranth, and Byzantium. B B Byzantium. It, uh, it, it's an, 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 an anemone. It's an anemone. Ahem. <coughs> Okay, let's close this baby out with some World vs. World action. So, one of the biggest additions to World vs. World for Heart of Thorns was the addition of the new Desert Borderlands map. This map acts as the same type of map as the Alpine Borderlands, but it switches for certain servers at the week's end. The map UI has also been updated to show certain stats when you hover over objectives to give you more details like points per tick. A new piece of siege equipment has also been added with Desert Borderlands and Heart of Thorns. The Shield Generator with projects force fields to disrupt enemy movement and support allies focusing on area control and support. Skirmishes, which were added on the September 9th, 2016 patch, introduce a new match system. Matches are week-long, split into two-hour time slices. During a skirmish, worlds will earn a war score based on how many objectives are held, with war score being used to determine the winner of each skirmish. When each two-hour skirmish ends, war score is reset, but actual map state and objective status remains unchanged. Skirmishes award victory points based on placement. First is 5 victory points, second is 4 victory points, third is 3 victory points. After 72 skirmishes, one week with 12 skirmishes a day, victory points are used to determine who is first, second, and third place. Got all that? This is going to be a test. Reward tracks have been added to World vs. World. The system is identical to the PvP reward track system, though there are some unique tracks to this game mode. The Gift of Battle, for example, which is used to make many legendary weapons, is now only obtainable by completing a World vs. World reward track. And there was not much rejoicing. An NPC named Heroics Notary offers consumables to unlock hero challenges as World vs. World rewards, siege weapon blueprints, and Heart of Thorns rune sigils and food recipes that would otherwise only be unlocked through PvE. And finally, there is now another means of unlocking the cultural armor through the script trade in World vs. World. He sells all tiers of all races' cultural armor for badges of honor and gold. And that's going to wrap things up for another Guild Wars 2 Boomerangs video. Before you go, hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified when future videos are released. Also, if you still haven't purchased the Heart of Thorns expansion for Guild Wars 2 and you want to, use the link down below in the description. That's a referral link and it helps me out quite a bit. Hope everybody has a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Take care.